In this video, we'll use the Oracle Bare Metal Cloud Services Web Console to create a virtual cloud network, a VCN. A VCN is a virtual version of a traditional network, including subnets, route tables, and gateways on which your Bare Metal Cloud instances run. You can configure the virtual cloud network with an optional internet gateway to handle public traffic. You can also configure the virtual cloud network with an optional IPsec VPN connection to securely extend your on-premises network. You do need to set up at least one virtual cloud network with at least one subnet before you can launch Oracle Bare Metal Cloud instances. When you launch an instance, you are required to provide the virtual cloud network and the subnet. After we create a virtual cloud network and a subnet in this video, we'll launch an instance in the next video. This is the home page of the Bare Metal console. Uh, I'll uh, click networking to create a VCN and then click create uh, virtual cloud network. For purposes of access control you can specify you need to specify a compartment. You do not need to give it a name. Oracle will automatically generate one. Notice there are two radio buttons. The first one says create virtual cloud network only. We'll do that first. We need to give it a CIDR block. This is a range of IP addresses and number of hosts you can have on this network. We'll use 192.168.00-16. This gives us uh, over 65,000 hosts we can have on this network. DNS resolution is enabled by default, but you can turn that off or back on. It automatically generates a DNS label and a DNS domain name. Click Virtual Cloud Network, and you have your first VCN. There's an action menu at the side where you can terminate a VCN or look at the details. You can also click the name of the VCN to see the details. This is the detail page. And notice there are no subnets, so you need to create a subnet. Click Create Subnet. Again, you can uh, specify a compartment. You do not need to give it a name. It will automatically generate a name. You do, you do uh, uh, choose an availability domain, so subnets are availability domain specific. Choose a, a CIDR block for this uh, subnet. I chose um, 192.168.0024 for 256 addresses. You need to choose a route table. There is a default route table. We'll talk more about that. You can make your subnet private or public. We'll make this public. DNS resolution, again, is enabled by default, but you can turn it off. Um, DHCP options, we, there, are, there are default DHCP options, so we will choose those. And then there, there is also a default security list, so we'll choose that as well for this subnet. And go ahead and uh, create. And now we have our subnet, and now we could launch an instance if we so desire. Um, we, we cannot terminate a VCN that has subnets. So if you ever need to delete a VCN, you have to delete the associated subnets first. Notice there's a default route table, a, def a default security list, default DHCP options, which we'll discuss later in this video. We'll go back up to Virtual Cloud Networks and create another one. This time we'll choose the second radio button that creates everything for us. Uh, so we'll click here and this says it'll automatically set up a Virtual Cloud Network with access to the Internet. These are the actions that will occur. So it's going to create a Virtual Cloud Network. Uh, the CIDR block is 10.000/16. DNS uh, resolution is enabled by default. Here's the big thing: it creates an internet gateway and then updates the default route table. So this automatically uh, will allow access to the internet. <clears throat> and it also creates three subnets: one for each availability domain. Um, <clears throat> the CIDR block for the first subnet is 10.000.24 for a total of 256 IP addresses. For the second subnet, it's 10.01.024, also 256 IP addresses. And the third subnet is 10.02.024 for 256 IP addresses. Create virtual cloud network and gives you an update of what it did. It created the internet gateway. It updated the route table with the gateway. We'll do that manually for our other VCN. 
Um, if I click the 1000, you can see that there are all three subnets now. All three have the default route table, default security list. There's one internet gateway, as you can see, that was automatically created. And um, the route table was updated with a rule to, to send all traffic that has a destination at IP address outside the CIDR block to the internet. It's also security list, DHCP options. We'll talk about those. So on our first network, we did not create an internet gateway. So we'll do that now. Click internet gateway and just hit click create. You don't really need to give it any details. Just click create. Then we need to add that to our route table. But first, we're going to talk about route tables a little bit. Your cloud network uses virtual route tables to send traffic out of the virtual cloud network, for example, to the internet or to your on-premises network. Each virtual cloud network automatically comes with a default route table. We saw that. If you don't specify otherwise, every subnet will use the, the VCN's default route table, which is our ca the case for us. If you do need a pub public subnet and a private subnet, then you need to create separate route tables for each subnet. When you add an internet gateway, which we just did, or a dynamic routing gateway, a DRG, to your VCN, you can update the route tables. So we'll need to do that. A DRG, by the way, is an optional virtual router that you can add to your virtual cloud network to provide a path for private network traffic between your VCN and your on-premise network. When you add a route table, when you add a route rule to a route table, you need to provide the CIDR block, the target compartment, and the target. For example, the internet gateway. If you misconfigure a rule, for example, you enter the wrong CIDR block, the network traffic for that target will be dropped. When you're routing traffic, Oracle uses a subnet's route table only if the destination IP address is not within the virtual cloud network CIDR block. So we're going to add a route rule to direct traffic whose destination IP address is not within the VCN CIDR block to the internet gateway. So we'll choose our network that does not have, uh, this one actually has the default uh, gateway and the route rule. So we'll have a look at that. There's the default route table for the VCN. Um, and you see all three subnets have the same default route table. If you click on that, you see there's a rule there. For CIDR block 0000, that means all IP addresses. You can create a rule, which we don't need to, for this VCN, but we will create a rule for the other VCN. So we'll select the 192.168, and um, we've already created our internet gateway, so now we want to create a route rule. So we'll say 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which means all traffic, and we want to direct that to our internet gateway. And that's it. Now this VCN has internet access. And now we want to talk about the security list. So you'll see, you, you notice that each subnet had a default security list. The security list are virtual firewall rules for your VCN. When you create a new subnet, you must associate at least one security list with it. It can either be the VCN's default security list or another security list you've created. Security lists have ingress rules and egress rules. Ingress rules specify types of traffic allowed into a subnet. Egress rules specify types of traffic allowed out of a subnet. Security lists are configured at the subnet level but enforced at the instance level. So all instances within a given subnet are subject to the same set of security rules. Security list uh, applied to a given instance, whether it's talking with another instance inside the virtual cloud network or to a host outside the virtual cloud network. Uh, each subnet can have multiple security lists associated with it. A packet in question is allowed if any rule in any of the list allows the traffic. When you create a security list, you choose whether it's stateful or stateless. The default is stateful. Stateful rules use connection tracking for any traffic that matches the rule. 
This means that when an instance receives tracking matching the stateful ingress rule, the response is tracked and automatically allowed back to the originating host, regardless of any egress rules. When an instance sends traffic that matches the stateful egress rule, the incoming response is automatically allowed, regardless of any ingress rules. Stateless rules do not use communication tra tracking. This means that response traffic is not automatically allowed. So to allow response traffic for stateless ingress rule, for example, you need to create a corresponding stateless egress rule. Now we'll look at the uh, default security list. This, um, go back to the web console and click the security list and you'll see the ingress and egress rules. And one of the uh, default uh, ingress rules is to allow SSH, so TCP, tra TCP traffic on port 22. The egress rules allow all traffic. Okay. Uh, you can uh, update these rules. You can delete rules. You can add rules. Note that instances running Oracle provided lineage images also have firewall rules that control access to the instance. So if you have trouble accessing an instance, make sure both of your security lists and your firewall rules are set correctly. Now we'll look at the DHCP options. These are pretty simple, so I didn't provide a slide. There's only two by default, the DNS type and the search domain. If you edit these, the Internet and VNC resolver is chosen by default. Instances can resolve host names when the VNC, Internet host names. Custom resolver, you have to specify from one to three DNS servers. So I'll cancel that. And so we're all set. We've got two VNCs, um, each with subnets. The security rules are set up. The gateways are set up and uh, we are ready to launch instances using either one of these virtual cloud networks. So to summarize, in this video we created a virtual cloud network in the Oracle Bare Metal Cloud Service. We also created virtual cloud network subnets. We learned that you must have at least one virtual cloud network with at least one subnet before you can launch instance instances. We also learned about route tables and we added an internet gateway rule to a route table. We learned about security list and we learned about DHCP options. In the next video, now that we have our virtual cloud network set up, we'll launch an Oracle Bare Metal Cloud instance.